All right, hey guys, in this video, we'll be checking out a few different realistic Flux lores. There's a bunch of lores that have released for Flux with the aim of trying to make Flux produce a lot of these realistic images. And in this video, we'll be checking out some of them, trying to see which ones are the good ones, which one you want to be using to try to increase the quality of your images and which ones you want to throw in the trash. Yeah, but if what you want is simply to just look at generating realistic images in general, I talk about that in my generating realistic images with Flux video. I don't use Laura's in that video. This video is going to be talking about Laura's. So using the Flux dev model, the F16 T5, we're going to be using the same seed for all of the images. So yeah, it's going to be EULA with a normal scheduler and 20 step. And the size is going to be 768 by 1024. The prompt is going to change throughout the video, but the prompt doesn't matter. All that matters is that all the images have the same prompts. Since what we're trying to check is the quality of the image and not the quality of like the prompt adherence, but the prompt will be changing throughout the video. And we have the Flux guidance set to 2.5. With the present guidance and the settings that we have, the base Flux model gives this image. The realistic LoRa's that we're going to be having in the video are, we have cinematic photography style, ultra realistic LoRa project, Boreal FD, Flux skin tech, and then we have amateur photography as well. These are the names of the LoRa's that we're going to be using in the video. And so you can see all of the images here. I'm going to go through these. So resetting, this is the image without any modifications. And the only thing that's changing is the LoRa. The only setting that actually is different is on the amateur photography Flux LoRa where instead of it being at 1.0 strength, it's actually at 0.5 strength because at 1.0, the image was just looking really, really awkward. So the first one we have is a cinematic flux lore. So looking at the cinematic flux lore, you'll notice a difference. So clearly it looks more like a cinematic one. I'd say that the there's noise in the image, but in general, relative to the initial image, the noise looks a lot better. So the image is more noisy, but it looks more realistic. If you look at the face on the initial flux image, it is a lot smoother. It doesn't really look detailed. The skin looks very pasty. This is a look that flux model can tend to have sometimes. With the cinematic Laura, the skin looks a lot more realistic. However, if you look at the blouse that the person has here, and again, a lot of these things are subjective. Okay, I understand, but still, if you look at the blouse, I would say the blouse in the original Flux model looks better. But overall, I'd say this image is better than the original image. Moving on, now we have ultra realistic LoRa project. I'd say this image is more realistic overall in terms of the general structure of the image, the general shape of the image, the, the silhouette, I guess to say, of the image. However, the actual fidelity of the image itself, the image is kind of messed up. There's like bad little like pixels and stuff. Keep in mind, with these LoRa's, the intent isn't necessarily to make the image look without any blemishes. Oftentimes, images that have no blemishes in them actually look less real. Reality is often imperfect. Usually, if you want to make your images look good, it's about how many imperfections it has, not how many perfections it has. So I don't want to judge it too harshly just for the simple fact of having imperfections. However, it is a little too grimy. And remember, all of these images, same prompt, same settings, everything. I would say, though, that the overall structure of this image is better. Boreal FD. Spoilers, I think this was the best one out of all of the images on this prompt. But like, yeah, you could see here, Boreal FD, it's this boring Laura, in a sense. I put that in quotes, but this is what the author called it. The idea is it has like these more mundane, average looking features that ultimately ends up because of what I just said, imperfections making your image look more real ultimately contributes to the image looking more real. So you can see that the expression the person has is very like dead. Even though all of them have a dead expression, like realistically, but I would say the person looks particularly dead. It's like camera just turned on and they were surprised. Very similar to this one where there's imperfections. I'd say the imperfections contribute way better to this image, making it look more real. The shirt looks a lot better. The bed and stuff looks more realistic as well. Out of the bunch, this I think was the best one. The next image we have here is, is the realistic flux skin texture one. This model is a bit different. Like the other models are more overarching models that are meant to contribute overall to the general quality. Whereas this specifically is meant to be a skin texture model. If if you look at the skin here, I'd say the skin in this image is more realistic than all of the other images. However, I would not say this image is more realistic than the other images. And then we have the final one here, which is Flux Amateur Photography, which I think was the worst image. The person kind of has this blank stare. The image looks kind of pasty. It doesn't give a realistic vibe. And keep in mind, the initial image I got from this was really bad. So I had to drop the actual weight of the Laura to about half. All of the other ones are in basic settings. This one, I have to drop it down. I still felt the image wasn't really that good. So it's the best I could really manage. This one, I would say is the worst one. Looking at the images again, overall, Boreal Reality is the best image. Amateur Photography was the worst one. You can look at all the images again here. This is the initial image that we started with. So moving on, now we're going to be testing an image that contains text. In general, these LoRa's are not going to massively change the model to do things that it otherwise couldn't do. These are not full fine tunes of the model. We're not looking for 
very general things or general ability. We're looking just for the specific pizzazz that the model adds to the image. The base flux model is more responsible for the quality of things like this, but these just add that extra 10%. All these images have the same prompt. I'm not showing the prompt in the video because it doesn't matter. We just care about the relative quality of the images. Just so you know, the sign is supposed to say verification ting ting in October 12th, 2024. That's what it's supposed to say. But this is the first image. So now we have here, this is the cinematic photography. One thing you'll notice is, and this is true of all of the images, by the way, the initial flux model, every single one of the Laura images I messed up the hands here. So if you look at this, you see five fingers here. Um, and every other one also has five fingers. But you can see this one. This one has the full thing, verification, ting ting in October 12th. The face is a little kind of blurred out. This is the next one. This is for the ultra realistic Laura project. Again, same thing. One, two, three, four, five. Same thing again. Hands are kind of messed up a little bit here. This other hand as well, also messed up. Uh, this is actually something that can happen with Laura's, by the way, because they're not as robust as the model, as the base model. Sometimes it can lead to these little issues. Then we have the next model here. This is the Boreal model. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, five fingers. But this one, as well verification ting ting in october 12 2024 i would say that this image had a weird change the image it looks saturated this is the realistic skin texture and this one still one two three four five five four fingers there five four fingers huh uh, yeah um <laughs> however i'd say this image probably was the best one in the bunch the skin texture in this image was very, very, very nice. And I think the flux realistic skin texture model is definitely showing its colors. Keep in mind, I'm pretty sure this model is really meant to be used in conjunction with the other models as opposed to by itself. But still, yeah, I think this, the skin texture here, also the hand looks, the fidelity of the hand is very good. Granted, the pose is a bit weird like this, but the actual fidelity of it is, is quite good. Her hand here as well, completely messed up, but the fidelity though, the fidelity is on another level, right? So who cares if the, the actual uh, substance is terrible? You know what I mean? Like, and then we have this one, which for some reason, amateur photography ended up making the the person like a kid. Um, but like, yeah, same thing here. I like that. It looks like a ch a child wrote the text as well. Verification. Tick tick. My name isn't spelled properly. October twelfth. Like, this is actually the smartest model if you think about it, right? It it, it is representing the thing adequately because this is what a child would write. Though surprisingly, one, two, three, four. Uh, fingers right of course issue the fingers are still messed up right it's, it's not nearly as good as the first image i'd say this is actually the best hand so out of all of these images very ironically i'd probably say the first image direct from the model is probably the best one however if i had to choose one i i think the realistic flux skin texture one probably and i know yes i know i know this is here but i think the fidelity of the image was increased very nicely and this probably most represents the use case of this model. This model is good for adding that extra bit of pizzazz to your, your images. Okay, next one. So those two images, we had just individuals in the image, either holding text or doing something else. With this one, we have a group of people. This is a, a more interesting, difficult test for the models. So we have the first model here. We have a bunch of different people here, a bunch of different people here. Also hand as well, uh, being held out here. Uh, the camera is being held up by a ethereal being. So that's something you have to keep in mind. An ethereal being is home, holding up the camera. But uh, regardless, uh, we have all these people looking at the camera here. Hand is being held out. Uh, she's actually issuing commands to the ethereal being. That's what her hand is. So the first one, cinematic. This was particularly good for the cinematic model. Very funnily enough, in general, the cinematic model tend to t trend the models towards more realism. And remember, I told you like there's this perfection imperfection balance that you're trying to strike when you're, when you're generating these images. I'd say in general, the cinematic model is trying to make things look more realistic and not necessarily add imperfections to the to the model necessarily. But this is one way it did add, actually add imperfections. And I think the image is better for it. I think the faces here are more realistic. The image, the overall image is good. The hand doesn't suck. You know, decent hands here. Issue though, the head of the first person is kind of like, not necessarily the best head here. However, you could excuse it because the shape the camera lens might be warping the image. So maybe it's actually extremely smart. But like, yeah, this is, this is one of the better images here. The next one we have is the ultra realistic Laura project. And this one as well was, was really nice. I, again, there's obviously problems with this image. Okay. Like if you look messed up hand here, messed up hand here, faces looking completely messed up, mangled thing in the background. But why do I like this one? The reason I like this one is the actual variety. If you look at all of these other images, it's generally the people are there. And they're just pushing out their hands, looking at the camera or whatever it is, right? The actual prompt that I had for this included various expressions. A bunch of girls are looking at the camera and they're they're showing, they have various expressions, but you'll notice that all of them are smiling. I didn't mention smiling. This was the only one that really felt like it, it captured a bunch of different people doing different things. You understand? 
And I feel the image is more varied in general. So yes, it does break, but this is the sort of thing that you could fix by increasing the number of steps. I'm trying to equalize everything with the generation process here. So I didn't change that, but that's something you could do. So that's why I'm not as mad about those things because they're fixable. You understand? You just increase the number of steps and the problems will go away. And the next image we have here is the Boreal. Boreal again. Same thing. This is very similar to the first image. Very similar in terms of the overall like uh, setup. But again, I think the first image is actually slightly better than this. Oh, one thing that the Flux models tend to do though, is it tend to look like a stock photo. This image looks kind of like a stock photo. If you, you see stock photo type images, this is what it looks like. Whereas um, if you go to this one, it looks less like a stock photo. So that's something that it actually changes there, even though it looks very similar to the first image. Next image we have here, we're back to realistic Flux skin texture. Uh, I, I think this one was not a particularly good one from the realistic flux thin texture. Um, I don't think it necessarily added the texture to the images that well. Sometimes with these sorts of models, they tend to really only be trained on very close up images. If you have an image that shows more of the person's body, then the skin texture isn't as represented. I don't know what the data for this model was, this Laura was, but that might indicate the difference that we're seeing here relative to the other images. Where I felt all of the other images, there's a very notable skin texture difference. And the last one is from Amateur Photographer. I'd say the face variation in this image is, is also much more represented. And this seems like more what this model is trying to do. However, the actual overall image is mangled as hell. Like, I mean, hands here, weird hands here, bunch of random stuff in the background. I mean, come on. This, this is as mangled as you're going to get, guys. This is as close as you're going to get. This person's head is here. Their body's over to the side. However, you need to have vision. Because you could increase the steps on this one as well and potentially work out some of these issues. So you have to keep that in mind. But still, uh, yeah, this one is probably... It has the most potential. Let, let's say that, right? That, that's a better way of phrasing what it, what it is. But overall, of all of these images, I'm, I think I would give this to the cinematic Flux Laura. This is the one I, I'd, I'd give it. Okay, so moving on. Now we're going to be addressing a further away image. Because all of these images that we had thus far were, were pretty close up to the person. When you, with these sorts of models, the further the person is away in the image, the worse the quality of that tends to be. There are a lot of reasons for this, right? But the easiest way to phrase it is... The, the smaller something is, the easier it is to make a single mistake, like with one pixel here or one pixel there, and have it look wrong. You understand? Like, if you have a, a face in an image, and it's like 20 pixels in the image, that's like 20 total pixels, if one or two of those pixels are wrong, it would just look incorrect. You understand? So the model has a very hard time being able to render that appropriately. So this is the the base like flux generation and then we can look at the other images so the first one is a cinematic image cinematic photography style again this image pretty decent here hands um pretty pretty good pretty good for the most part again remember all of these hands are of lower quality in general because they're very tiny in the image now so it's gonna have a harder time before the hands were like straight up in, the, in front of the camera with this one it's for it's smaller so it's, it's always going to be a bit difficult here this one is a pretty good one i also made sure to add in some imperfections on the grass as well so the image looks a, a bit more realistic but again this is a decent one this is for the cinematic photography next one ultra realistic laura project this was not as good not as good the, the people aren't like necessarily terrible but the overall like image here yeah this was not as good there were like little problems all throughout the image that kind of just prevent the image from looking that good. I do think if you scale this image up, it would improve the quality of it, especially relative to the other images. Then we have here Boreal Reality, Boreal FD again. And this one as well is quite decent here. We have the patchy grass, we have the people here, people in the background, another decent one. Flux skin texture, which I would say again, if you look at the, the people's skin when they're far away from the image, it's not exactly contributing that much of the, the skin texture here. Uh, and also, the skirts are kind of messed up a little bit in terms of how they overall look. In the other images, they were more... They were, well, besides for this one, actually. They were, they were more, like, represented adequately. And we have the final one here, where I think this image was kind of messed up. The proportions are completely destroyed. It, it's really it's really messed up. And this is the amateur photography flux image. Well, most of these images were quite good. Like, even this one that has its problems is still decent. This one was decent. Uh, This one was probably bad. Decent, decent. Like, all of them were decent. However, say, overall... It's probably the cinematic Flux Laura is probably the one that I would give it to. But one of the cool things about Lauras that you can do is combine them with other Lauras. So what I decided to do was instead of simply just taking, you know, Lauras and um, generating with them by themselves, I decided to take them and combine them with another Laura. So with this one here, we have a character Laura. This is a famous celebrity known for her talk to a podcast. This is the base image with the Laura that features her character in the generation pipeline. Then all of the other images use that Laura plus themselves. So the first one we have is the cinematic photography here. And that leads to this image. I think it smooths out the skin a decent amount relative to even the, the base image. Next one we have is the ultra realistic Laura project. Let's say it changes her face a bit here, making her not necessarily look like the famous 
podcaster. This image is better than this one, I would say. The actual contrast and color in the image is more realistic than this one, where it smoothed out her face too much. So that's the cinematic style versus the ultra realistic Laura project. Then we have the boreal reality again, which I would say also smooths things out, but not to the level of cinematic style. So it's somewhere in between cinematic style and ultra realistic Laura project in terms of its quality. Then we have realistic flux skin texture. And again, I feel like this lines up with my theory here in terms of this Laura, the flux skin texture Laura seems to work best with close up images where I feel like here, keep in mind, her face was changed a decent amount here. This kind of doesn't really look like her as much. I feel what you can do to fix that is either increase the strength of her Laura or reduce the strength of the flux skin texture Laura. But yeah, I would say her skin is definitely increased in, in texture quality by a decent amount relative to all of the other images. But her face did change to the point of looking a little bit not like her. And the final one you have here is amateur photographer. Where I would say her face is also smoothed out here. Taking everything as a whole, I would say that it's the realistic skin texture is probably the best Laura in this context. So for this next stage, what I decided to do was go to all of the best images for each of the models and then take them and upscale them with SD Ultimate Upscale. I talk about this in my making realistic images with Flux video, but basically you take the SD Ultimate Upscale plugin and you plug the image into that. Flux is particularly good at doing this since Flux extends really well to image to image. And I did this to essentially get the bestest representation effectively of each and every one of the models. So to, to uh, you can see exactly what they look like. Okay, so the first one I have here is the cinematic style, which I felt that this the picnic image was the best one for that. And we have the comparison here. And you could see when I scale the image up using SD Ultimate Upscale, you could see what the image looks like. If I zoom in here, you could see the detail that it adds. Especially if you look at the hand here, you can see that it starts to sort out some of the issues that existed with the hands before. Now, it's not perfect, obviously. Same with this here. Her hand starts to look better there. Same with this one. And then her skirt as well where it starts to not look like this weird rample that instead gains a more de definitive texture. So yeah, this is, you could see here the true potential, I guess to say, of the model. Moving on, the next one we have here is the realistic flux skin texture model. I don't believe this mo this image actually improved as much as I would expect, but still we can zoom in here and you could see here the difference between the base model and the scaled up version. I wouldn't say this improved as much necessarily. Next one here. Oh, this is a particularly good specimen to check here. Now we have for real. I think this image, as, as I prophesize, dramatically improved. If you look at that person in the back, they get glasses added on. If you look at all this noise that was here before, you know, just a random garble. Now, all of a sudden, it now looks like a person. If I go in the back here, you can see signs that now render into somewhat legible text. I mean, you shouldn't be able to read it because it's in the back, right? It fixes a ton of the issues. Because this entire image was mangled before. You see, this person's face obviously improves by a dramatic degree. Now, you will notice something. The hands here, don't change. Flux is so good at keeping the original structure of the image when you're doing this sort of SD ultimate upscale, it won't remove stuff like this. If you want stuff like this to be removed, as I said, you'd have to generate the initial image with more steps and then scale it up like So it doesn't fix that. But the actual faces here dramatically improve. Oh, the glasses here. This is another like part that was really interesting. You could see the, the rim of her glasses getting added in here. It's significantly better. And these ones tend to scale really well. Because if you get a very good varied image to start with, you can then use an upscaler to dramatically improve the quality of the image. Now we have what I think was the best one for this flux skin texture. I can go in here. I can see what I mean. Again, this increases the quality here, but not necessarily the by a gigantic amount. Oh, then we have what I think just in general was the best looking images from all of this. And this was generated by Boreal. If you look at this image now, you could see the dramatic quality increase from the upscaling. The point that now it just looks like a real image. It improved by a lot, especially, especially in the background here, where now you have a significantly more well rendered, like uh, stuff on the bed there, adding to the realism of the image by a lot. Yeah, guys, if you liked the video, so make sure to subscribe, maybe so that you can catch more videos. I would say that of all of the images, the general takeaways from the video, I would say are realistic flux skin texture works good in conjunction with other models. It seems like when the person is closer to the camera, for real reality and amateur photography seem to give you more varied images. Cinematic model seem to be the easiest to work with. They, it seemed to most consistently result in good looking images, though the images were never the actual heights that it was able to hit wasn't as high as something like the Boreal, which seemingly had a higher range that it could achieve. Uh, cinematic for general quality, Boreal for the best quality, and for skin quality, you want to use the skin model. Okay, guys, thanks for watching the video. Catch you in the next video. Uh, yeah.